Almost late. Almost late. Okay, so we got the same settings as last time. Should be good audio. Crappy picture. That's okay though. Good audio. <laughs> I'm just gonna hang on. Hello everybody. I'm really friggin' slow here, sorry. Feel like I've been dragged through the dirt. No, I'm good. Thank you, Arena Roll. Let me click my thoughts here. Google loves me. Kinda, sorta. Still up and running. <laughs> and so this was a rather interesting experience. You go looking for a bit of gold and you find a mother load. Oh, I screwed that up. I'm gonna stop the video when it's live streaming, Dana. Hang on. Can't hear myself. Keep noise down. Looks good. Okay. We're good to go. Hi, Stacy Lane. I say hi to everybody as a warm up, folks. If the comments are to the left, we're live streaming. We usually live stream most nights. I'm not feeling good the last couple of nights, but I've been here for about 100 days straight, so pff, big surprise, but. That's part of my life anyway that I hurt. Not much I can do about it. It's okay, right? So we found the, like the most bizarre, inconceivable thing imaginable um, was Dr. Gills, uh, Raymond Gillsmitty from Oklahoma up on uh, Channel 13. Hi, folks. Uh, the names are screaming through there now. Oh, I can't even keep up with it. <laughs> Here we go. I'll come in and give it a try. That's what I'll do. Then we'll get busy. I think I got some really good stuff for everybody tonight. Hi, Toxic, Basic Data, Seedman, Luke. That's for our Ketzer, Lori, Red Button Studio, Dana Tostad, Boyke, Sergeant York, Toxic, oh, excuse me, Missing Sky. Ketzer, John, Ping, Radioactive Banana. That's pretty funny, man. Damn computers, give me a hard time. Probably a little bit loud here for everybody tonight. Stacy, Pam, Patrick, Standing Foot, just passing through Aqua. Uh, Dwayne, Lisa, Rhonda Flash, Schmidt, Sergeant. Zip free, cap red, nuts for art, uh, uh, mass sterilization, Stetson, multi hungry eyes, Angela, Sergeant Sylvia, there you go, pretty darn good. I know I missed most people. James, let me buzz up through, Lori, BC Data, Janet. I'm usually pretty good, eh? Pretty darn good. <laughs> That's to be expected when you're doing this all the time. Okay. And then, you guys kept me busy the last couple of days, which is pretty cool. You know, that was a uh, quite the lesson here today. I'll get rid of that so it'll calm down. St start making less noise here in a second for you. My headphones pick it up. They're expensive headphones. And that mic is much more sensitive to me, even though I have to dial back on my volume, than it is... I'm freaking sign in again. Than it is uh, when I make the audio recording. And so that audio recording in part one of this video... Um, I don't know what happened to that. That just... I lost some of the files and I couldn't re-render it and then I had to go back and find a way to, f to finish the project and I wasn't feeling good but I had to get that out there so I can do this one too. <laughs> okay, I think I got serious by now. Yeah, I can't keep up with it either, Kitzer. Pretty brilliant, it's awesome. I, like re I love reading the comments after. You know, like I know a lot of you folks now. Better than you know yourself. Let me come over to the crazy man. 
Okay, I just got to cover a couple of headlines before I say anything. Ken Buesler is back out there. BBC got him up there. PBS just came out with a video a few minutes ago. I watched three quarters of it just before I got online. I went buzzing to see if anything new was going to pop out on Fukushima. And here was PBS, uh, Ken Buesler saying, well, you know, you allowed 7,000 Beckwells in your water, in your drinking water, so... You know, Beckwell's of cesium off the coastline is no big deal because you're allowed a thousand times more in your drinking water. He actually says that. I left a comment there like three minutes ago. Dirtbag. And then he's up on BBC saying it on two different stories. North America scientists track incoming to Fukushima plume. And radiation from Fukushima reaches Canada's west coast. And... Cruise finds Fukushima pollution, and tonight PBS, we are ready. And if you go ahead and look up on Fukushima until a few minutes ago for Ken Buesler, and all you'll do is see me, the entire freaking page. You guys are awesome. <laughs> it's not from me, it's from you guys. I had no idea. That was, that was quite a shock for me. I had a rough idea, but just to go out and look for Ken Buesler, go to... Any kind of way of trying to find them, you could find them. All you can find was me and you. You can find you stomping on them through me, I guess, you know. Uh, but this one, uh, hang on. Yeah, bu -bu -bu -bu. Three, four. Okay, I'll try number three here. Now, I got some pretty bizarre stuff in the last couple of weeks. I still haven't got to share with people. I just got this one quote here. They were talking about. <laughs> hang on I lost it anyway they were talking about I can remember it so they were equating this is what the frigger done he equated a pound of water with cesium in it from the ocean with a pound of potatoes with natural potassium 40 in it and it was 4600 times more Beckwell's in a pound of potatoes in a pound of potatoes than it was in a pound of seawater with radioactive material from Fukushima in it and <laughs> so if you you know you eat we don't eat potatoes no more we can't drink water anymore it's got 7,000 Beckwells in it it can't uh, wear clothing anymore it's got Beckwells you're actually releasing 4,400 Beckwells potassium 40 every moment in your body it's insignificant normal background radiation and so if you drink a glass of water with 7,000 Beckwells you it's a homeostasis it's, you off gas it it's like a regulator, it's like a thermostat, it's like a cruise control. And if you uh, have potatoes and eat potatoes with uh, 4,600 times more potassium than the seawater, well, let's just say that radioactive isotopes was in fresh water for the sake of... He uses seawater because he's trying to use fresh water, drinking water, right? <laughs> which, which is pretty bizarre. What about the 7,000 Beckwells that are in the salt water, Ken? So, if I eat the potatoes, I off-gas that. But if I eat the cesium, I get a tumor. Right? Your body attacks it. It's a foreign obstacle. It goes right to your heart. It goes right into your muscles. But if you eat potassium-40, no matter how many Beckwells, you off-gas that many potassium-40 Beckwells. And so that's the game. It truly is the game, right? Uh, let me read it. You would get more radiation. Let me see if I can get this straight. You'd get more radiation if you were closer to man-made radioactive contaminated areas and a lot less if you're not close to it. Brilliant. It's like standing close to a fire, except it's not. Because the radiation from the fire, <laughs> if there was a radiated fire, goes up into the atmosphere and it's called radioactive fallout. A fire is not called radioactive fallout. But radiation dispersal is radioactive fallout. You would get more radiation if you're on a plane with a smoke detector at 50,000 feet getting a CAT scan and a dental x-ray while drinking a glass of water with 7,000 Beckwell's potassium-40 and then a bad tub of ocean water with rocks release, releasing natural uranium-238 and natural radon with the plane curtains up eating a banana and you will if you're standing in the middle of any spot where man-made radioactive material is falling out of the skies. Alright? 
and I'm going to tell you 500 more times. Oh, and you get even less radiation if you're on the space station than if you stood in the middle of Fukushima's Diachi military industrial complex's nuclear plant, which is a byproduct. And you can't make uranium-238 out of yellow cake out of from bananas, blah, blah, blah. And if you do get radiation fallout, if you do get radiation fallout, it's probably from the 50s and the 60s. But don't worry, all you got to do is smile and the radiation cannot hurt you because it's like pouring a spoonful of water in the ocean trying to measure the sea level change. Blah, 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 blah. Rah! So these are all lies that they tell. X-rays, CAT scans, dental X-rays, chest X-rays. Never heard them before, have you? Bananas, natural radiation. And because natural radiation has huge counts, it's insignificant. Nobody knows why they count it. Nobody has a friggin' clue why they even bother with it. But why did they study plutonium-238 and 239 intensively for almost four decades on puppies? If it's not dangerous, if it's not scary, if there's nothing to worry about, why do they equate it with radiation that's indigenous and normal or something that you would get from a X-ray, because in X-ray, you're not ingesting hot radioactive isotopes or particles or atoms. So what was the sense of doing that? And what are they doing with all the livers and the kidneys and the hearts that are contaminated with plutonium-238 and 239 that have an extraordinary shelf life? If you burn it in the incinerators, you liberate those isotopes back into your community. What about the people that work there cleaning up that place? What about the people around that place? Are they getting radioactive fallout? Surely, you know, why did he bring the reporter out on the sidewalk? Because he didn't want to traumatize him by bringing him inside. Did he cut all the vocal cords out of the puppies, I wonder? So you don't have to listen to him screaming in agony all the time? Did he do it before or after the inject him or ingest, make him ingest? Plutonium-238 and 239 that gave them all cancers and killed them all. And they studied the effects for 40 years. And why did they use that? Why didn't they use that guy this time, right, to explain the plutonium fallout? Why did they uh, get away, go over to the guy at Oklahoma University that talks about bananas? You notice how they started that one off? He said, not all healthy fruit are healthy. And so they done that to equate what he was going to say next, that, oh, you get more radiation from that fallout than you would from eating a banana. But if you eat a banana, you off-gas the exact same amount. So you can't get more by eating a banana, but you can get more by ingesting any of uh, those radioactive fallout particles or atoms or even isotopes that escaped there. And you got to realize that that's a half a mile underground because that stuff is harmless. That's a half a mile underground because they put all the harmless stuff down there when they're desperate to get rid of the highly toxic stuff. Surely to Jesus, they got some of those rooms down there filled up with extraordinarily toxic stuff they had to get rid of. And because it's a ventilation shaft, it's just, you know, it's a hole in the ground. The only way down there is through a couple of holes. So once you have an accident, the whole area gets contaminated, right? All the walls, every piece of furniture, every piece of equipment in New Mexico, in that hole in the ground, gets contaminated. Friggin' dogs are, this is like three or four nights. The hounds of Fukushima. Let me get rid of this. Right, and so when you look at New Mexico and you take in Dr. Raymond Gildsmedi, from Loveless, L-A-C-E, but it's easy to equate it with Loveless because how many tens of thousands of puppies and dogs did he kill, irradiate, dissect, sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice? Why did he put a link up to all of his peer review studies if he didn't want me to make a video about it? That's another serious question. Why was he putting all that stuff up there? He got nothing to hide, right? Just like when you're when you start off 
with your first paper dissecting baboons and you jump over to beagles, there's probably a good reason because tearing the babies away from the mothers of baboons is probably really tough. But taking puppies from a dog, a little hound dog, who don't have aggression in them, who really don't, right? You don't see like the big bad hound dogs walking the neighborhoods, terrorizing the neighborhood, okay? They're usually adorable, just fun little animals that are good for rabbits. Even though an old guy had taught him to chase moose. <laughs> this is a different story. But a beagle, because it sniffs, right? You know, it's the real sniffer. And then uh, just year after year, constantly doing just unimaginable, unimaginable, frightening things to to what we assume is a pet. It just like crosses so many lines. What the hell is wrong with them? You know, and, and it's not just at one lab, okay? That's the whole point of this. It's not, and, and it's not just one single lab. Just, they need independent labs all over the country doing the exact same thing so they can actually find out truly what's going on. Right, and so that's why they lock up all the peer review academic studies. There's 4,800 4, peer review academic studies, I think it is, produced every day. There's three a minute. 1,440 minutes in a day, I can't remember the numbers. But say, I always say 4,800, fuck it, I don't even care. That are published. That are published. Not counting the ones that are not published. So if I add them together, I'm going to be right. My number is always right, 4,800. It's at least that much. Because a lot of them didn't get published. And so that's really important, folks. I can't go in there. I can go over to Elsevier, Springer, and Wiley, the three biggest published outfits on the planet. And I can put in uh, Fukushima. Uh, Elsevier was 3,900 hits, and they gave me nine samples, uh, where just a couple of them I can read the abstracts. The rest of them you couldn't read nothing. But I was able to copy, paste, and search it, and find links to it elsewhere. But you know, you got to pay 35 bucks, or 500 bucks, or a couple of thousand bucks to read each of these studies. There's 3,900 studies. Uh, and so, but media would have access to that. They have the budgets for that. And so they would have had access to all the models, all the information. But if you had access to that, you could find out how many puppy studies they're doing elsewhere, see? So you got to kind of think about, it's not just puppies, right? There's labs out there doing cats. They specialize in beagles. There's labs out there specializing in German shepherds. And labs out there specializing in... Chihuahuas and there's a lot, you know, uranium 239, 240, 241. So whatever the species that are the main species that they're they're doing, and the other ones don't don't even probably know what's going on. They don't even care. They just get funded for four decades to mass murder the animals. So all the neighbors in the neighborhoods, do they know what they're really doing there in that building? Did uh, did K R Q E? Ever wonder why they want to do the interview outside? Why not show off the laboratory that's been there for several decades? And you know, when, when I was listening to Dr. Raymond Gilmitty, that creeped me out. That's why I sought, I sought out information about him. Not only the fact that he said there was no way that... I gotta watch this arm. There was no way that Fukushima plume can cross the ocean. Well, you know, I got news for you, Doc. I know it's going to sound bizarre. There's this little thing up there called, it's not little, it's a big thing, it's called a, anybody? Yeah, yeah, jet stream. The jet stream. <laughs> I know, novel idea. Comes right across the ocean, right above Fukushima. And if it's only traveling at 100 miles an hour, in three days it's in your friggin' city because you're right underneath it. And so for you to say it wasn't, now you're right that it won't help them, see? Because it's going to go into your body anyway. It's going to sequester in your organs, in your muscles, in your bones. Get through the liners of your lungs, the liners of your brains. Anyway, these are micro particles. There's links down below about the buckyballs, the urethal, peroxide, sulfur phenomenon. And these are studies where you can read those abstracts showing that 
these are like little nuclear engines, these little buckyballs, they ingest because they sprayed salt water on the melted cores, the three melted cores, Doc, the biggest thing on the planet, and KRQE never had a single deer on Fukushima. They never had nothing there on Japan, literally, botanic gardens, and they had a couple of uh, tributes there to the tsunami victims. But how come KRQE, it came out swinging for Carlsbad. They got their nickel out of that roid. They're at it all day. They hammered at me. They didn't show my name, but they hammered at me two different videos. Not that I give a frig. Just got my attention. How about me? <laughs> I don't care. That's irrelevant to me. You can demonize me all, all you want, but you won't show my name there. Because you know people will come over and get educated and you're fucking on your backs. You're done. You're useless feeders anyway. How can you get out there and put it out on your website over and over and over? It's like an x-ray. It's like a dental x-ray. It's like a chest x-ray. It's like normal background radiation. People are exposed to normal background radiation all the time. I don't know what all the... F well, this is a fire. You had a huge fire there. It went on for days. Nobody went down and put it out. Nobody's been back down in Carlsbad. It's like Fukushima. Reactor 1, it's a million sievers. A million. A friggin' million. Do you understand what that means? Outdoors, right alongside the reactor. A million. That's a death dose. That's no man's land. The people there are the homeless. Right, they're going to be taking the homeless out the street, can't even read. All drunk and hung over. And bringing them into Fukushima because they won't do the jobs themselves. They won't let the international community because they see all the legs and arms sticking up into the topsoil. From all the victims, they can't move because they're so radioactive. Like I've covered it. Just unbelievable how much we've covered on this site. It's... it's uh, like, Japan itself is friggin', it's doom's land. A million Beckwells of CCM detected at Fukushima school after being decontaminated. Think about that statement. 10 million Beckwells of CCM detected in Minnesota soil samples. That's friggin' insane. Like, 11 Beckwells cause kids to get permanent damage to their hearts and their, their organs. 50 Beckwells is permanent lesions to your organs. 50. 20 million, 10 million. 27,000 Beckwells in a kindergarten of cesium. This has got nothing to do with potassium 40. This has got nothing to do with x-rays. You know, you're ingesting radioactive particles and atoms, isotopes. For down there, from one end of the country, 1,700 miles against the prevailing winds in Japan. But 200 kilometers from the meltdown, 2,700 Beckwells, that's nothing. 300,000 Beckwells in Tokyo for the end of March. That only included iodine 131. Right? You got to realize in Carlsbad, New Mexico, it was mostly uranium 238. That's what's left over from the production of nuclear fuel. The plutonium is just a tiny percentage of it. Even though they say, oh, that's a specialist, they specialize in plutonium, got to stick it under the ground. They've been showing it in the ocean since the beginning of time, since they've been at this. They irradiate the plutonium. I suppose the licensing agreement says it's going to be in a sarcophagus till the end of time. They go dump it out the side of ships endlessly. Just 450 billion gallons at Hanford? 450 billion gallons. But let me touch up on Japan a bit more. 600 kilometers from Fukushima, high levels of cesium detected in Osaka Bay soil. But wherever you found cesium, 137, 134, there's 30 times more strontium-90. That goes right into your bones. Unbelievable. Not just your bones, though, but... It loves settling in your bones, like the video today talking about how plutonium also loves your bones. Well, so does strontium-90. High levels of cesium in Osaka Bay soil. Uh, but anyway, that's that folder. I just want to throw it out there for you. 
Just a little doozy. Uh, each reactor in Fukushima had 3,450 spent fuel assemblies. And each fuel assembly was 80 rods. The rods were uh, 12 feet long. And one of those rods is enough to kill all the humans on the planet and all the mammals on the planet. Half a rod, a quarter of one of those 12 foot rods is enough. This was mock fuel. These, there were three detonations down there felt by, one of them felt by AP, uh, 25 kilometers away. It's dead in, that was a nuclear detonation. The cloud was recorded at five miles up, the plume. The roofs of them, the top four stories, were all fuel pools. Each fuel pool had roughly 1,535 bundles in it, and each bundle, again, assembly, is around 80 assemblies, 80 rods, 12 foot rods, plutonium, uranium, created from nuclear weapons, remilled. This was already enriched quite a, quite a few decades ago. It's just hell on earth. That reminds me, hang on a second. Um, hang on a second. Dun, dun, dun. My subscriber uh, sent my video to my subscribers is unabled and I can't enable it, by the way. So yeah, not very happy with Dana. Hang on. I had to haul everything off my desktop to have enough room on my desktop to do this video that I put out today. That's a lot of work. Uh, but USA, just some quick stuff from USA. I already covered extensively. Do to do. Wait now, let me find something better. Oh, I got a USA two there that I didn't click on. For good reason. I'll come over to the comments here in a bit. Oh yeah, here we go. What I want to talk about. This was radiation and illnesses. A lot of you heard of this stuff before. We're just going to run through a, a dozen or half a dozen. Nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists. Nuclear radiation, ionizing radiation, ionized cesium, ionized strontium, ionized plutonium, ionized uraniums, 234, 235, which were in the hole in Carlsbad. And that still drives me crazy that K. KRQE insists repeatedly, like I showed in part one of this video, you know, I got all those clips, insist that plutonium is just equivalent, even though their main spokesperson a couple of years before that had a 40 year study showing that it's the complete opposite of that, that is unbelievably deadly, that all the animals got cancer, all the animals had the horrible unimaginable tumors. All the animals were suffering unimaginable. You know, and I should have went in on their site and looked for puppies, because I'm sure they got a few sh heartbreaking stories here about puppies. And we'll do it for the next video. I guarantee you they do. And they were picked up, um, uh, oh yeah, hang on. That PBS with Ken Buesler, he's funded, Woods Hole uh, Oceanographic Institution, they're funded by the Barbara Moore Foundation. Also, that's who funds PBS New NewsHour, same foundation, right? So that's that's bias reporting right away. You'll find that video after. No, I lost track. Let me come back over. Ban rainwater. Yeah. So a rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine 131. Radioactive iodine 131. Radioactive iodine. 131. Radioactive iodine, 131. 20 million becquels in a liter of rainwater. These are the rain, this, this is from the salt water, this un, unseen phenomenon of spraying salt water on the melted cores at thousands of degrees temperatures, and they created these buckyballs, these microscopic one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. You know, just two microns, one micron size. There's no mass out there that you could buy without spending 50,000 bucks or something that's going to stop that shit from getting into you. Not that I, 
You know, if you got cuts or... There's just so many ways for it to get into you. And it sequesters in your body. Potassium-40 from bananas and potatoes. If you eat it, you off-gas it. Right? It's homeostasis. It's like a regulator. Okay, Zoe. Good thing I put another blanket there for you. Figured you'd be up to that crap. Post, uh, on U.S. during post-Fukushima peak, 20 million particles a liter. So it accumulates into the ground, too. A lot of people try to say, oh, that's just this, or you can fit this many particles on a pinhead, blah, blah, blah. 20 million particles, ingest one of it, your body attacks it. Your body goes after it immediately and doesn't stop until it puts a sarcophagus around it. Your body is the only thing out there that can build a sarcophagus to contain these little particles, apparently. And that's cancer. That's tumors. Uh, let me go to another one. Serious questions arising about why Canada government failed to alert the public about radioactive rain after Fukushima, January the 19th. Oh, yeah, let me go back to that 20 million one. That was September 19, 2012. That was a Simon Fraser University study. 20 million becquels in a liter. Disintegrations of radio, radioactive iodine. Radioactive iodine has a very short life. Times 10. So if, like iodine 131 would have had an 8 day uh, half life. That's times 10. So 80 days. It goes right into your thyroid right away. But it still gets in you. It sequesters. And it creates issues. Autoimmune deficiencies. Makes you weak, makes you sick, makes you nauseate. Particularly that kind of number, 20 million particles in a liter of rainwater. You any idea how freaking hideous that shit is? It's unimaginably hideous, okay? Uh, but that's only iodine. 20 million becquels of only iodine 131. There's iodine 132, 10 times as much travels with it. Iodine 133, probably 15 or 20 times as much travels with that. Now, they got a two-day half-life, one and three-quarter day half-life times 10. More than enough time to make it over here and get ingested and cause all kinds of issues, weaken your system. But you also got iodine 129. Every three iodine 131s is an iodine 129. With a 15 million year half-life, 150 million year expiry date. Right? So, like, uh, radioactive rain caused 130 schools in Korea to close, yet rain in California had 10 times more radioactivity than it did in Korea, and it didn't close or it didn't tell anybody. And so this stuff washes down to the coastline where you get higher readings. And anybody comes there and tells you radon, you're going to get, like, <laughs> you know, 400 beckles, 1,200 beckles of radon on the beach, is an outrageous lawyer. It's an, a fabrication. It's an envelope. They would grab that and use that for weapons. For other kinds of weapons, okay? That's high. That's unimaginable stuff. They would love to find that. Do you think they're going <laughs> to... No, they build a base right there, start a mine up right away. Woo! It's like crap tonight to these guys. So, 130 schools, April 7, 2011, closed because of radioactive fallout from Fukushima. But 10 times more radioactive fallout in California never even fucking told anybody. Never friggin' told anybody. And once again, you know, the iodine 132, uh, 131. But there's 10 times as much as 132 travels with it. And you can't have it without CC and with a 30 year half like times 10 is 300 years. You can't have it. That stuff is still in the soil, whatever landed there. The Americans got their own model of the CC-137 dispersal. Shows the entire northern hemisphere blanket it. New Mexico has a leak of plutonium, some of the most dangerous stuff imaginable. But you got all this other stuff. The Calgary Sun reported January 22nd, no need to panic, probably, about Fukushima fallout that rained on Canada. Government hasn't even released the data. Uh, turns out that CC-137 detected in Virginia rain. There was... Homeland Security funded a study where they found huge counts of iodine in Northern California rain. Uh, 131 levels in... Uh, what the hell is the name of these places? Massachusetts and Pennsylvania. 
Mercer 29. Uh, Rainier Tokyo is 29 million Beckwells. Square meter in the soil because it's accumulating there, see? That's why I'm trying to get into people's heads that don't know any better. That this stuff is unbelievable, unimaginable. That's why they had Dr. Raymond Gilmetti, right? And that part one of this video come out and lie to you folks. It was massive iodine came down. Massive. Massive. There must have been a huge plume landing around there. And this is why they were out there. So there must be a huge release right now in New Mexico. And that's why they're hammering on me and other people out there. And why they're trying to demonize YouTube. Why don't you demonize Twitter? Why not demonize Facebook? Why not demonize Instagram? Why not demonize the rest of them? Why demonize YouTube? Because the truth was right here. Because we weren't beating around the bush. Because it was tangible. Because it was digestible. Right? Because we stick to the facts. I get a little crazy sometimes. But we stick to the facts. I get a little crazy. I get a lot crazy sometimes. Oh. I should make clear that... Uh, let's skip that one. Radioactive... Well, I'll say it now that I said it. I should. A nuclear expert said... I should make clear that if the EPA safe drinking water levels doesn't apply to rainwater, nothing does. That was April of 5th, 2012. And he was talking about radioactive fallout. Oh, it doesn't apply to the, to the rain, to the radioactive fallout, because then other people, right? So they have to hide radioactive fallout. That's why they never warn you. That's why they never tell you, because you'll go into your Geiger counters and you'll be looking for symptoms and signs, right? And then universities would have to put out dispersal models. Police would have to go tell people to stay indoors, <laughs> right? And then you're not your then you're not the slave anymore, see? Because then they're fucking scared too. Nuclear expert striking that radioactive iodine 131 in California rainwater is so far above permitted standards. New York Times contributor confirms California rainwater 181 times above drinking water drinking water standards. There is no drinking water standards. For iodine 131, this is where it gets scary, right? When they say it equals drinking water standard, it's 7,000 Beckwolds. And it's not potassium 40 they're talking about, right? So you got to learn to decipher the lie is that whenever they say drinking water, that's around 7,000 Beckwolds. So then you can figure out what the numbers they're actually talking about. 181 times above the drinking water, water standard. So 181 times, that was like that other headline of 20 million Beckwolds. In a liter? That's what they're fucking talking about. I'm swearing now. Sorry, folks. Radioactive fallout and rain is 10 times more than originally reported. And like that video that I put out there about New Mexico with the fallout maps in it. Right? I got that from Channel 4. Now, they got it from a blogger, but they didn't debunk them because they knew better. But when did you ever see a, a fallout map like that? You'll see it on the cover of my last couple of videos, or four videos back or something. You'll see that fallout map with bananas, with friggin' bananas. Now, he used a standard model. Hang on, I'll go find it. I will friggin' find it, because I got it. I'll come back to this stuff in a second. What the hell have I got done with people? Am I even still on here? It's hard to say sometimes. Because that page hasn't moved. Let me come back and say hi to a few people for a second. Because I said I was going to do that earlier. Didn't hi, Miss Milky! Missing Sky! you find links below to them. Fans Filtration! we got to get you down there. You're doing so much work. Night Rider, Standing Foot! Uh, Reram! Patrick! Uh, Red Button Studio, another day, another band. You piss plutonium forever, says Stephen Jones. Pam Holly says hi to fan filtration. Patrick, uh, Sydney. Let's see if I can find a couple names here. Aqua, oh, I don't. See, I don't get. I got like twelve comments on the inside. So friggin' embarrassing, isn't it? Like, YouTube doesn't make it easy for me to do this. I'll come over to the video and say hi to a couple of people for a minute. And then I'm going to jump back over to those plutonium studies that we were talking about. The Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless, L-E-C-E, the, the mass dog murderer. 
There we go. Uh, okay. Original Punisher, he spammed out. I'll get you after, bro. Yeah, all seafood is off limits. Right, because if they're going to go out there and equate everything with potassium-40, there's something else going on that we don't know about. They're out there testing all the time. Uh, let me see what we got here. Banana in your bones and liver and lungs. Ion G Green is spam, so I'll on spam, and hopefully that helps. But I can unspam everybody's comments after, I think. They got a new button there that lets me un unspam everybody. Woohoo! Hi, Lori. Standing foot. Uh, let me scroll up a second. DC, James. Yeah, follow. Well, no, fallout is from all the nuclear weapons, too, and from all the nuclear bombs and nuclear bullets, right? The uranium-238 bullets, because when they break apart, they're releasing their own isotopes. They're, re they're releasing uh, x-rays and gamma or um, neutron, right? Because those bullets are solid uranium-238. They're not tipped. They're not coated. The Abrams tank is shooting 10-pounders. The Black Hawk helicopters, the uh, A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half a minute. That's the equivalent of 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of uh, uranium radiation, 238, which would have four point. This has got nothing to do with the uranium 238 in the ocean. They put uranium 238 ocean into the equation to confuse you, okay? That's irrelevant. It's like potassium 40. The uranium-238 from nuclear fission, ionized uranium-238, is friggin' deadly. It's friggin' deadly. You know, Fallujah, 80% of the babies down there where they shot a lot of uranium-238. No eyes, no mouth, no ears, no, no face. It's horrible, unimaginable. Uh, I came over to say hi to people and just went off to them a little bar. Now, this friggin' thing is not going to update. That one won't update. This one is not going to update. 41 minutes into the stream. I'm getting, nope. I'll refresh the page. That's just how it rolls, man. And while I'm doing that, let me bring up uh, radioactive fallout. Let me go down a couple more of them for everybody because this is really important. Radioactive iodine 131 in rainwater samples near San Francisco, 18,000% above federal drinking water standard. Federal drinking water standard is 7,000 becquels, right? So 7,000 becquels times 18,000% of just iodine-131. You can't have it without the iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life. You can't have it without the 132. At that same time, there was a massive amount came in. So you had to have cesium-137, cesium-134, uranium-234, uranium-235, plutonium, not polonium, but plutonium. 238, 239, 240, 241s, right? You, you can't have cesium without uh, 30 times more strontium-90 and all its daughters, all the cesium daughters, all the uranium daughters, all the plutonium daughters. They're only done to count on the iodine because they can catch that, they can find that. Because they got a short half-life, it's really good in the conversation. Oh, they only got in eight days. <coughs> I mean, 80. <coughs> Let me keep going. I hope you're doing very good. Concerns about rain on the U.S. West Coast. <laughs> I'll say. Vancouver, Canada, radiation tests showed iodine-131 <laughs> in rainwater at almost 100 times above U.S. drinking levels. And the U.S. drinking levels is 7,000 becquels of potassium. But they always throw it into the equation, even though it's got nothing to do with it. And so in this calculation, 100 times above it. So 7 million becquels. 700,000 becquels? I lost track. 7,000 becquels. Now, some places in America, you're allowed to have 90,000 becquels of potassium-40 in your drinking water. So whenever it says above the drinking water, 100 times above it, well, in some places, like 7,000 becquels of potassium-40 in your drinking water, other places, 9,000 becquels. And you drink it, and you can just drink glass after glass, and you off gas, 7,000 becquels, 7,000 becquels, it means nothing. Like breathing the air. It's 
just body functions. But it's a great way to distort you. It's a great way to confuse you. It's a great, great, unimaginable way to manipulate you and deceive you. It's a great way to disarm you. It's a great way to turn you against me. Because you you honestly think your government wouldn't lie to you. So why am I worried about the numbers I talk about? When you're allowed 7,000 Beckwells for Christ's sake, stay not in your drinking water. This guy is crazy. Ah! Just ignore me. Because they've been brainwashed by the machine. By the creature. By the nuclear critters that are have infested every aspect of our life now. Like 4,800 peer review academic studies every day. If you just took one day's word and you put it to, oh, I don't know, yeah, making the world better. <laughs> or solving solar power. 4,800 professors, hundreds of students, thousands of man hours, millions of man hours. There's 1.6 billion uh, man hours a year to make nuclear shit even friggin' worse, to kill puppies, to kill a friggin' ocean. The radioactive isotope, if I put it in a glass of water from the ocean, it's got 75 million to 100 million phytoplankton. Not mention the trillions of other creatures, but it's got the very basis of the food chain. Around 75 million to 100 million, they create oxygen and they're the basis of the food chain. You drop an isotope in there, it's bye-bye to a trillion creatures. But it's not over. It doesn't dissolve, magically disappear. It's got a half-life of billions of years if it's uranium, hundreds of thousands if it's plutonium, hundreds if it's strontium and cesium. But we don't know because they don't tell us a lot and they got so much of this out there. What other, because you're creating this stuff, like Fukushima reactor three was two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. It was graphite. There wasn't that friggin' shit you got down at Fukushima or the stuff they're putting in the ground in New Mexico or the stuff at Hanford that they're dumping into the ground or the build bullets that they're you know 2.5 million rounds from Oklahoma a lot of money in Oklahoma and making nuclear bullets and nuclear bombs they're dirty bullets and dirty bombs they're what your you know TSA and Homeland Security is warning you about Al Qaeda are gonna get a chunk of friggin' uranium 238, and they're gonna come over there and strap a, something onto it and blow it up, and they're gonna have a, a catastrophe. But every bullet you fire into their countries from the Abrams tanks, from the Black Hawk helicopters, from the A 10 Warthog, from every weapon they got down there, every battalion down there, half their bullets are gonna be uranium 238 from McAllister's bomb manufacturer, McAllister, Oklahoma. Just up the road from all the banana fallout. Yeah. Vancouver rainwater is where we left off. Canadian radiation test shows iodine 131, excuse me, in rainwater at almost 100 times above U.S. drinking water level, which is around 7,000 to 90,000 becquerels of potassium-40. So it's okay to have that much cesium or strontium or anything else because that's how they're doing it. Go look up Ken Buesler and you won't find a conversation out there where he doesn't do that. There's not a single time he won't do it. You look up people like Dr. Neal from Oklahoma University in that two-minute video, a few videos back I made about bananas, massive radioactive banana fallout in uh, New Mexico video. Well, you know, these guys knows better. They know that potassium has nothing to do with the plutonium. But, you know, all of them should know better than even say the words plutonium because the mine is actually full of uranium-238, right? They didn't take just a junk and put it down there. They're desperate. They got a billion tons of this stuff. They got to hide somewhere or go fire it in other people's countries. That's 20 train car loads a day coming out of just McAllister's bomb manufacturer in McAllister, Oklahoma, a uranium-238 bullets and bombs. Dirty bombs, dirty bullets. If you took one of those bullets and you blew it up in your local city, your local community, you would go to jail, you'd be demonized till the end of time. You'd be a terrorist. But your children are going down in other people's countries and firing it into their water, their schools, 
Because right? that's what nuclear energy is, right? To get rid of it by uh, getting tens of thousands of dogs to inhale it and studying for cancer. That's another way to get rid of it. And then they burn it in the local incinerators and it goes as radioactive fallout into your community. That's what they're doing. They're sick and twisted, demented. Canadian officials. Uh, Boise, B O I S E, rainwater had the highest levels of radioactive material in the U.S. April 3rd, 2011. Not even a month after. 80 times the amount of the iodine 131 allowed in the drinking water again. See, iodine 131 comes from rods that broke, they're not natural. Right? That's where the cesium comes from. The, the rods broke. This stuff builds up into rods. The rods are uranium, plutonium. You know, there's 80 rods in a bundle. There's 3,450 bundles in the missing reactors. Ugh. And all three of the reactors melted through their cores. I'm starting to feel like myself that time. Once again, when you say drinking water, be scared. Be very fucking scared, okay? Be really, 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 really worried about that. And let me see if we've got another doozy for you. Hang on. Ooh, da, da, da. There were 6.6 .6 million Beckwells of cesium-134 per square kilometer. And... No, I'm sorry, 160 million becquerels per square kilometer and 200 million becquerels per square kilometer. 500 in July the 19th, there was, by July the 19th, there was 590 million becquerels per square kilometer of uh, 134 cesium and 750 million becquerels. Now, hang on. So that was San Francisco Bay. I might have screwed that up. Hang on. Yeah, that was radioactive fallout in rain 10 times more than originally reported. I forgot, sorry. So they originally reported 6.6 .6 million becquerels per square kilometer. It turned out to be 160 million becquerels per square kilometer. The government reported of CC-134, CC-137 of 8 million becquerels per square kilometer. It actually turns out to be 200 million. A week later, those numbers, they reported 31 million becquels of cesium-134. It was actually 590 million becquels per square kilometer. <laughs> and 750 million becquels. Massive friggin' fallout, eh? Just massive lawyers. Radioactive iodine-131, Pennsylvania. Rainwater sample, 3,300% above federal... Drinking water standards, which is like 7,000 becquels. If you had 7,000 becquels of iodine-131, you were drinking it, buddy, you're in a whole lot of shit. You don't off-gas any of it, not even a little tiny bit of it. That's madness. And so to keep their jobs, keep their pensions, just murder puppies for a living, whatever, they just come out and lie. But, I mean, what they've done down there... They demonize me and all I do is tell the truth. I don't fabricate anything. I don't misrepresent anything. You don't have to. This freaking shit is nuts. But what they do is they, they, they constantly, consistently, only misrepresent what's happening, what it means, what the implications are. They didn't bother going out and find Dr. Raymond Gilmitty to talk about plutonium, did they? When plutonium was leaked, but they went there for iodine. And what's his response? Oh, it's not going to make it over here. You miserable bastard. They had to go find somebody really fucking cold really fast, so they went down and got him. Because they're loveless, right? You know, how many puppies do you got to murder, radiate, asphyxiate, sacrifice to become the 2000 Scientist Award? I wonder. Frightening thought. Every rainfall brings a new batch of radioactivity. You gotta realize that Japan hasn't stopped hemorrhaging alone. Right? Goes up to the jet streams here two days later, three days later. Remember the plumes that are going coming into the ocean, going into the ocean at Fukushima, 
They're running under three melted reactors. Number four caught fire twice to fuel pull. That was massive, inconceivable releases. And by the way, let me finish that one off with Chernobyl and Fukushima differences, where Fukushima was a 30% meltdown, or Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Fukushima was three 100% meltdowns, missing poles, missing buildings, missing 10-story buildings of fuel poles. That never goes into the equations. They only put iodine into the dispersal. They don't bother mentioning the cesium, the strontium, all that uranium that lives forever. And will live forever, right, that stuff. It doesn't lose its energy. If someone ingests one of those radioactive isotopes from Fukushima in 2 billion years, it's just as deadly as it is today or it was the original day. It doesn't change. It'll flow around the planet, get into your lungs and your your. 9,000 grandsons, granddaughters, lungs, uh, a couple of billion years down the road when you come back to visit Earth, and it'll give them cancer. They'll probably have a cure by then. By then they'll be able to wear glasses, you can see all the radioactive... If you could wear glasses and see the radioactive fallout falling out of the sky any given day because of all the radioactive releases from weapons on purpose, hemorrhaging, leaks, meltdowns, accidents. The SL-1, for instance, was a fine accident in the late 50s. Nobody even friggin' knew about it till recently. It got declassified. Just endless lies. They've never decommissioned a power plant. You've got Sellafield, England, one of the most toxic spots on the planet, too, hemorrhaging out 8 million liters a day into the ocean. CCMs, strontiums, at least. That's all we ever hear about. No one wants to talk about reactors don't run on CCM. CCM is made in the rods when they're friggin' done. Right? It builds up in the rods, and if you break the rods, they get released. Nobody bothers to mention that the reactors don't run on that shit. It runs on uranium, enriched uranium, enriched plutonium. Right? And therefore directed energy weapons. It's got nothing to do with power. These are military industrial complexes creating directed energy weapons and they need the exotic isotopes and that's why they're using exotic combinations. And that's why Unit yeah. 3 in Fukushima was 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. So that makes it 18 million times worse than Chernobyl if you don't even if you don't count the fuel pool that's missing from the roof of number 3. From the 3 to 4 pools that were above number 3 are missing. Of course, it detonated all over the place, but it was atomized. And a gram of it produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. So what's 3,450 bundles with 80 in a bundle, and each rod is 12 foot long, and is packed with uranium and plutonium going to release into the environment. You know, like a pound of it is probably this big of a rod. So what the frig is a 12 foot rod times 80 times 3,450 and a half a gram of it. Do the math on that one. Imagine that coming at you at a cloud. Well, there's a link below of Health Canada flying from one end of Canada to the other end of Canada to a radioactive plume for 18 hours at 750 feet. And there was a huge spike going on. They never bothered to tell the children not to go to school that day. They didn't bother telling their parents not to go out that day that we know about. They didn't bother telling the communities, which is their job. That's what we hired them for. That's why we gave them all the money they ever wanted. We gave them everything they ever wanted. We gave them endless. There's no reason that they couldn't do their job. They have no excuse why they couldn't have done their job. They have no excuses like, you know, KRQE, Channel 13, has no excuses of why they used mass murder and puppy uh, basher Dr. Raymond Gilmetti for one episode coming from Japan they call it Japan they don't even mention Fukushima a single friggin video and yet they're hammering away at the whip right but they don't use him again when there is a plutonium release and he's the expert he's got four 40 years almost of study of you know taking puppies and giving them uh, vicious cancers 
And then other studies out there that are giving them the same doses and killing them 16 days later. What do they call it? Um, I can't even remember now. I just stored it. I just realized I'm running on. I'm running on the clock there. 58 minutes. Okay, I'll come in and say good night to everybody. Didn't quite get everywhere I wanted. Like, we done pretty good. We bounced around a little bit. It's been most of the last couple of days. Pretty. That's just my life, right? I've been like this for a long time. Not much I can do about it. One side goes and the other side gets worn out because he's doing all the work. And when he goes this side, it's healed up. And I live my life with that side. You don't know what's going on. I got an old injury from diving. 128 days on the ocean. And I woke up in a hyperbaric chamber is all I know. And then I spent the last 14, almost 15 years rebuilding my life. Uh, good night, Missing Sky, Kurtzer K, Knight Rider, Aqua, Jill, DC, Babu, Tree, Double O Tree, Pet Lovers, Miss Milky, uh, Kate, uh, James, Mickey Schmidt, so do you folks want me to disconnect my my stream and leave the chat room up, say for an extra half an hour and nighttime, and then I'll come in in the video because that won't sh like because I can disconnect and the stream will stay right, and then you can chat till you wind down for a few minutes till you figure something else out. You guys need a chat room. There's no doubt about it. John Lorry. Amthurs, because I've been thinking about that, you know, I should be doing that maybe for you folks. Leave the stream running for an extra half an hour. Not the video. And so when the video renders and pops back up, you won't have that half an hour of nothing going on. But we noticed that when I disconnect, if I actually disconnect from my Adobe, right, then the, the stream waits for me to come back online. So it'll sit there just like it is now, but you can still chat away. Uh, okay, James, standing foot, fans filtration, missing sky, round the flash, uh, Tyrrell in BC, pet lovers, you're welcome, uh, Krishna, mass sterilization, Patrick, Stephen, 2012, Kathleen, thank you folks, Dwayne, Lisa, Miss Milky, yeah, you like that idea, Miss Milky? Okay, why don't we try that tonight? Why don't we try that nice see how that works for everybody. I'll leave it up for half an hour. I won't be coming online because it's too much trouble for me to set back up in a half an hour. But what I'm going to do, instead of disconnecting up here, I'm going to go and disconnect to Adobe. Your chat room will continue. And my time is 8.33 at 9 o'clock my time. Tonight is just 27 minutes. I know, I sure changed, yeah. And we'll see if that works. And if that works, then we can do that each night for you. Because I know it gets frustrating we're all here for an hour, and I'm like, I oh, fuck it, I'm gone. And you guys are all like, I ain't got no to fucking chat anymore. And we'll try to figure something out to accommodate all of that, because I think that's important. That's probably something I want to get in on, too, too, you know, and do. Because, like, I have to wind down, too, after, and I usually do it by reading everybody's comments. I always go back to the first comment, and then I head back to the last comment. And usually I fall asleep reading comments, and I'll wake up, get a cup of tea, then I line root tea, and then I'll go back and uh, pick up. So, okay, let's try that. I'm going to sign out. Here we go. And we'll leave the comment section and see if that, help, see if that works. I'll be watching. Let's